What's up, everybody? Doran Aldana here coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. Today, I have a very special guest with us that's going to share a very inspiring true story from her own experience on the front lines of real life as a mortgage professional, the one, the only Colleen Doyle to share with you guys how she went from being on the struggle bus, uh, trying to just eco out a loan or two a month early this year as everything has shifted from a refi market to a purchase market and how she turned things around to literally double her referral partner stable, double her referrals, double her, double her closings and double her commissions all within just two months. So if that sounds inspiring to you, you've definitely come to the right place. And Colleen, it is such a joy and a privilege to have you here. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Doran. I'm like honored to be here. So thanks. Well, it's an honor to be able to uh, share your story with the mortgage community. And for those of you who just joined us, uh, we're talking today about how Colleen Doyle doubled her income in just two months without inflicting yourself with the hell of cold calling, begging, bribing, or kissing butts. So uh, again, if that tickles your fancy, and if you'd like to learn more about how she did exactly that, you've certainly come to the right place. Why don't we start off by just having you share a little bit about your story, Colleen, how long you've been in the business, actually, even before that, where you're located, how long you've been in the business. I know it's been a little bit of a convoluted journey for you, so you can share yes. a little bit about that. But also, perhaps even more intriguing is what inspired you to get into the business? Why don't we start there? Yeah, sure. So um, I'm coming at you from Northwest Ohio in Southeast Michigan. And um, I got in the business actually back in the early 90s. It was my first job right out of college. I worked at a finance company didn't even know what a mortgage rate was. I had to go to the library and look it up in the Dewey Decimal System, a book, <laughs> to right. figure out what's a mortgage, what's an interest rate, went to my interview, worked at a finance company for two years. Um, my husband's job took us up to Detroit. And um, I said, why don't I just do this on my own? So I opened up my own mortgage company and worked for five years up in Detroit. And then I sold it in 2000. And um, I got back in the business in uh, 2018. So I wow. had an 18 year gap there to be mom. I was a stay at home mom, did all the volunteering. It was very hard for me to get out of the business. I, um, bet. I enjoyed it so much and I loved what I did. But, um, you know, that I mean, I, I wanted to be, you know, there for my family, too. So I knew yeah. one day I would eventually come back not knowing in 18 years how much the industry changed. No kidding, right? Right. And what a beautiful display of you really being true to your values, because while I'm sure your career was important to you, your family was even more important to you. So I love that you honored that value and that hierarchy of values in your life. And yeah. uh, there's, in my mind, there's no higher call than to raise up the next generation, to raise up, you know, world changers and, um, mm -hmm you know, impact makers for the next generation. So I, first of all, just salute you for making that decision. I'm sure it wasn't easy. It was not an easy one. Yeah, no, it wasn't. But um, thank you for saying that because it was hard for me to give it up. That's for sure. Yeah. But I always knew, you know what? You just take one day at a time, right? Yeah. No. And if, if God had made, made them so beautiful and cute, uh, chances are after the first week or two of having no sleep, we'd probably put them in the recycle bin. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's for sure. <laughs> so God knew what he was doing when he made them real cute. If they looked like little monsters, probably be a different story. <laughs> right. That's right. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so here you are now after uh, being back for three years. And obviously, things have tra changed tremendously. Uh, that's the understatement of the year since you left in uh, mm -hmm. in 2000. I mean, my goodness, the landscape has changed so much. You know, the stuff that they used to get us to do in terms of uh, marketing even five years ago is like old school from the dark ages, let alone 18 years ago. So mm -hmm. I can certainly appreciate how much of a stark contrast and uh, surprise that must have been for you. Tell us about your journey. Obviously, um, you know, you got back in the business three years ago, climbing back up the mountain. The kids have now grown up and got to the point where they're independent enough that mommy can go back to work. 
So here you yes. are now back to it. Tell us about the adventure on the front lines of real life as you tried to climb back up and how things shifted, of course, for many, you're certainly no exception as things shifted from a refi market to a purchase market. Maybe just give us a, li a little bit of the lay of the land there and perhaps also a little bit of the, uh, you know, the struggle and the pain that you were starting to encounter as the market started to shift for you. Right. So when I got back into it, um, it was 2018. So five years ago and uh, had no idea, like came in, like did not know anything. Um, someone's like, well, you know, reach out to your realtor friends. I'm like, I don't, I don't know any realtors. What? I mean, it was just a whole different uh, market than when, when I was doing it prior. And um so a lot of my business, right, was all purchased because I didn't have that refi, you know, those past mm -hmm. customers where I could call on or who would be calling me for that refi. So really that first year, I just I, I just kind of had to grasp, you know, the technology mm -hmm. and getting the um, getting into some coaching, you know, how do I get the business? And so 2019, I think I closed like maybe 22 loans and I was right. really proud of myself. 2020 right. came around. I think I doubled that, like tripled it to 60. And then at the end of 2021, right, I was in a good groove. Everybody was doing everything in the market. I think I got um, close to a hundred. I think I closed 99. And then 2020. Yeah, you you scooped around. the low hanging fruit for sure yeah, on that. Sure. Mortgage then, gold rush, low, crazy, low rates. Got to love that, right? Yeah. So it was good. Like I kept learning. I was still learning on every deal. Um, people were calling, right? Getting a lot of referrals. 2022 world around, still having a good start to the new year. And then I switched companies halfway through the year and um, hard, you know, making a switch is hard. So, um, but it was very positive. That's what I wanted to do. And I'm very happy with that. And it just, you know, I, I probably lost about 25% of my business, you know, making that switch too. So kept thinking, okay, what else do I need to do? you know, to get the market going. I was doing right. my daily activities, but I wasn't getting the results that I wanted. So for my year end goals, I just made a list of my goals and um, started looking around and found your coaching. Right. And I said, you marked every box on it. And I said, OK, going to give Dorn a call and have a conversation with him. There are no accidents. By divine yeah. grace and providence, our paths crossed. And uh, obviously, there is a tale of transformation we're about to share the before and after in a moment. But let's pause and take a step back okay. just for a moment. You mentioned that you were doing these daily activities and you hit the point of diminishing returns where you just weren't seeing the traction, weren't seeing the results. Tell us about how the convergence of you moving companies, of course, that usually it's a bit like cleaning a closet, you know, it gets yeah. worse before it gets better. And so that can often take wind out of the sales just because it's a huge momentum killer. You know, a lot of people will bounce from one company to the next, just looking for the elusive butterfly of the silver bullet that's going to solve all their business problems. In okay. some cases, it's very much relevant because there's a real break in leadership or fulfillment that needs to be fixed. And the only viable option is to move companies to get that solid operational footing in place. So obviously everyone has their reasons. You had yours, you made the right decision, but it was still a huge kick to the proverbial ovaries when it comes to your momentum. Thankfully your comp was better, right? So at least uh, your comp was better such that you didn't lose a huge amount in revenue in 2022, but then things started to shift in early 2023. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I was still doing well. I was still getting comped, right? They took great care of me. My new company's taking great care of me. But I wasn't hitting the goals that I wanted to make that I thought, yeah, I can do it here, too. And I just needed something else to help me move the needle. So tell us about some of the things that you were doing, these, quote unquote, daily activities that you were doing. 
Yeah, what were they you know. and who was telling you to do them? Where were you getting this, you know, prescription for your daily activities? You don't have to say the specific name, but, you know, was it coming from your yeah. manager? Was it coming from a coaching, you know, firm or something? Uh, and what specifically were you doing and what was your take on why it wasn't working for you? Yeah, so a lot of my activities um, were, you know, things that I had done in the past, right? So I got myself in a good routine and, you know, you those Monday morning calls, right? Let's right. do that. And then your Tuesday updates and then your Wednesday, let's reach out to your past customers or your pre-approved customer on Thursday, your VIPs. Um, There's people nodding their head right now. being like, I know the program you're on. It's the, uh, you know, as I call it, doing it the hard way program. Not that there's anything wrong with having specific intentions for each day, but cold calling 40 realtors every Monday, definitely doing it the hard way. It might've worked five, 10, 15, 20 years ago, but certainly with this market shift, with hyper competition, margin compression, rising rates, inflation, everyone and their dog chasing after the same realtors, all those refi crabs who have, you know, already done crawled out from underneath their refi rocks and clamoring after the same realtors, uh, not having a killer kick-ass compelling value proposition, but just calling them up on Monday and asking, how was your weekend? Yeah, that's not going to cut it. And apparently you were no exception. Is that true? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I just really had, um, yeah, yeah, just exactly what you said, you know, and I would meet with realtors and I'd say, why, you know, why aren't they sending me something? You know, right. so a few reasons. One, they probably didn't have anything to send, you know, at that time. And B, I felt like I could just really improve on my value um, proposition. Right. So you're spinning your wheels, you're putting in the activity, but it's not translating to productivity, right? I liken Mm -hmm. it to splashing around in the ocean, but not necessarily paddling powerfully towards Paradise Island, right? Right. So, you know, there was a lot of splashing going on, but meanwhile, you're going backwards and heading closer and closer to that uh, drowning point where, you know, you're returns are so insufficient that you're wondering why you're doing this. So that was kind of the the trajectory you're starting to go on. You went from doing six to eight deals a month to like, you know, you had one deal in January, as far as I recollect when we spoke in January, I think you had like five or something in the pipeline for February, but it was up and down like a yo-yo. And so very precarious. What was your biggest, deepest fear at that point, as you were in the middle of that dark valley of uncertainty, lack of traction, spinning your wheels uh, on the tarmac, not getting results, going backwards. Obviously, you have an identity of someone who sees yourself being successful, everything you put your hand to. Uh, There were some significant things that were at stake with you in terms of what you wanted to do for your your hobby and what your hobby wanted to do. Tell us a little bit about that and some of your biggest, deepest, darkest fears at that point prior to launching on Planet Prosper and uh, working with us. Right. So my goal was, um, and I set high goals, I wanted to double my production from 21 you know, I wanted to go to 200 loans, you know, a year and <laughs> closing one loan in January wasn't going to get me there. So yeah. I was like starting to sweat it out. Right. I'd been in mm. the company now for six months. My operations is great. Kind of got the feel how everything's working and um, coaching there was good, too. But um you know, great. Like they have good programs. So that helped, you know, get going to, um, for generating more business. However, uh, my husband wanted to go from full-time to part-time or possibly just take some time off before finding a new job, a part-time job. So he's been in the medical field for 25 years. I was like, yeah, you know, he's an angel here on earth. Like he saves lives every day. He helps so many people. And um so the line while you were in mummy mode, right? So now it's like your opportunity to return the favor, right? Right, right. So I just wanted to take some of that pressure off of him too. So I said, okay, what else can I add to my business to help me get over that hump and you know become the awesome rock star I am? What was at stake for you? You know, obviously, this is not an easy code to crack. As we said, when we had our conversation, you can't just Google search it, right? No. You wouldn't be in business for 18 years if it was something you could just easily get off a free podcast or a free blog or, you know, just doing a quick Google search. So 
obviously there was a, a period of time where you were trying to find a solution to no avail and there wasn't a whole lot of certainty as to when or how you're going to fix it and a certain amount of frustration mounting around the juxtaposition of your desires to liberate your hobby, your desires to double your income, and the fact you're going backwards financially and in your volume. What was your biggest fear in terms of what was really at stake if, heaven forbid, that problem persisted for you? Um, well, my biggest fear is like, what? I mean, you know, we got kids in college, right? And I mean, my biggest fear is how are we going to pay for everything? I mean, mm -hmm. that was the financial one right there. Um, without having to tap into our retirement, right? We're too young to do that. I mean, we could always do that, but the goal was never to tap into that, you know, until we get to mm -hmm. the age where we can. Um, so that was pretty much my biggest fear, you know, is just trying to take care of everybody. Mm, yeah, I can imagine you felt a bit like the weight of the world on your shoulders many a time. Yeah, a uh, Knowing bit. that, you know, it's like you had the upside potential in your business and yet you're kind of stuck in the parking lot with the emergency brake on spinning your wheels at 8,000 RPM, but not really getting the traction you needed. And so then of course, you know, by divine grace and providence, uh, you saw our ad on Facebook. Is that right? I don't remember. Was it on Facebook? Maybe. Honestly, uh, I don't know if it's that or our, our podcast, I'd have to look back and see. But I think it was Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. So you saw our Facebook ad, you, Stop scrolling. You started reading it. You kept reading it. You clicked. Yeah. You registered for the masterclass. You watched the masterclass. At the end of the masterclass, you booked the call. And then we got on the phone and we had a, just a real honest conversation around kind of where you're at and wh where you want to be and what's at stake. And uh, make a long story short, the end of the call comes and it's that precipice moment, right? Where it's like, do I shrink back in fear and let my fear stop me? Or do I say, screw it, let's do it. Tell us a bit about the moment of decision for you, where you're on the edge of the cliff, so to speak, about to take the leap. What was the fear that you may have had in that moment that uh, if you weren't as committed as you were, it might have stopped you. But instead, you were obviously more committed to your dream than your comfort zone. So you said, screw it, let's do it. What was that fear for you and what made you decide to take the leap? Yeah, the fear for me was, oh, shit. Um, oh, can I not say that? <laughs> hey, on, we keep it real. We keep it raw on these episodes all day, every day. So keep okay. it coming. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, that's, um, you know, so it was a lot of money. And I said, wow, you know, I got kids in college and I got, you know, we have to plan on. He leaves his job, you know, paying the bills. And I said, but you know what? If I can't invest in myself, who else am I going to invest in? Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason I wanted to have that conversation with you is because you, you hit all the boxes. Um, you checked off everything I was wanting for my business plan for 2023. I had certain goals and I said, yeah, I'm going to invest in myself, you know, um, and I did it. I said, let's do it. Screw it. Let's do it. That's how That's champions right. roll. Yeah. And you were certainly no exception. I'm curious, what were some of those boxes that were in your mind that needed to get checked off that would give you adequate certainty uh, to really pull the trigger if those boxes were checked off? Yeah. So number one, I wanted to increase my active agent count, right? Because mm -hmm. once you increase that, you increase your leads, you increase your closings. So that was huge for me that I wanted to do that. Um, second was the tech platform. And you you checked all the boxes on the tech, tech platform for me, such as my testimonial engine, the Google reviews, the social media platform, where um, I could just post everything at once and it goes, and also mm -hmm. the marketing videos. That was huge for me. Mm -hmm. um, and they were sharp and I liked it. And I said that would check that box. So that was another one. And then um, also just the coaching. Like I'm a huge fan of coaching. I get coaching at my company. I love my coach. He does an awesome job. And um, coupled with your coaching, it just, it took off. Beautiful. And I think there's something about success that leaves clues 
You know, Tony Robbins, he has that line, success leaves clues. I totally believe that to my core. And one of the traits I see in clients that are really successful with our program is they're really coachable. And it doesn't mean they agree with everything right up front, but there's a certain amount of malleability. Uh, there's an agileness in their spirit that says, okay, I'm going to empty my cup. I'm going to, I'm going to give this my best shot. I'm going to give up my own preconceived notions of what I think will work or could work or does work. And I'm going to take your prescription and I'm going to run with it because you're the coach. I'm the student. And so, yeah, let's go. And that was certainly the spirit you brought to the program, which is a big reason why you've been seeing the success that you have. So I just want to honor for you, honor you for that right out the gate. But tell us about some of the skepticisms that perhaps you felt initially as you launched onto Planet Prosper. Because obviously, we're not the vanilla cookie cutter type of program. What we do is very unique and distinct and different than the average Joe Schmo marketing coaching or mortgage coaching out there, as I'm sure you're well aware, being in the business as long as you have, I'm sure you would concur and I'll let you do so in your own way. But what was perhaps uh, one or two things that kind of gave you a knee jerk reaction of like, are you kidding me? There's no way I'm doing that. And, you know, you had to work through that skepticism. What was it for you? Yeah. So, um, you know, initially that first one to two weeks completely lost. I'm like, wait, what? Like, this is way too much. What the heck did I sign myself up for? Right. And, um, I mean, Jordan, so, I mean, I went through every module three times. And after each time you're listening to it, you get more and more. I took notes on every module. Um, I, I talked it out aloud, you know, things to say and stuff until it just came natural. And, um, Honestly, like my skepticism at first was, this is way too much. But as you get further and further into the program, everything just starts clicking, right? And it works. And on our calls, I loved seeing other people like who, when they first got on, were just so lost and could, didn't know anything. And after, you know, two or three months, they were just flying like butterflies. It was amazing. Right. <laughs> and that whole thing is the mindset. Yes. So from the calls, um, if you can get into switch that mindset, which um, you and Co Coach Pete were great at doing, and just listening and re-listening to those calls that really um, like moved the needle for me and to say, hey, you know what? I'm awesome. And I know I do a great job for my realtor referral partners and for my buyers. And it just gave me more confidence to go out and spread and share that with everybody, you know, that I, I encounter every day in my business. So um, that was huge. But at first I was skeptical. I'm like, no, this is this is too much. <laughs> but one thing that you did say is keep it simple, superstar. That's so right. that's what I loved. I picked like, what are the top three things that's going to mm -hmm. move the needle for me? And right. I really focused in on that and I honed it in and, um, and it worked. And there's so much more. I haven't even touched, like touch, but I'm going to, it's on my list, right? I'm, I'm a list girl. I, right. it, I cross it off and I move on to the next. So um, I'm just excited to tap into your, you have a plethora of a menu of items to tap into. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, but that was my first skeptical thing was just very overwhelming at first. Yeah. And, you know, most people will come into the program and they have the exact same experience. So, you know, it doesn't take long when you show up to the Q&A calls and you hear other people sharing the fact they're overwhelmed as well to realize, welcome to the club, you're in good company, right? Yeah. It's kind of like, hey, if you're used to loafing on the couch uh, or if you're used to doing a home workout and then you go to a elite level, Olympic level trainer and you start doing elite level, Olympic level training, it's going to feel overwhelming, right? It's like your body, yeah. your mind is just not used to that kind of rigor. But that's what it takes to create transformation is to step out of our comfort zone. You know, all growth is outside of our comfort zone. So I love that you're willing to embrace that, work through it, 
acknowledge it, be real with it, not pretend it's not there, but just say, Hey, I'm feeling this. And to just allow yourself the grace to be in that space, not make it wrong, but just say, Hey, this is part of the process and embrace it and lean into the challenge versus shrinking back from it. That's again, a big reason why you saw such uh, tremendous results in the program. And you're just getting warmed up is because you didn't shrink back from that discomfort. As we call it here on planet prosper, we get comfortable being uncomfortable. Right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Like this podcast, I didn't even want to do it. I'm like, oh, right? that's not my thing. But uh-huh. if I'm uncomfortable, I thought, then do it. Because absolutely. you know what? I mean, if I can do it after being out of the business for so long, people who are in the business for who have been in the business for a while and are struggling, you can do it too. Yeah. Like it's so simple. Um like some of the things that I added into my daily activities was um, just being consistent with my morning routine. Like that yes. was huge. That whole yep. morning routine, you win the morning, you win the day. Like I What's love one thing that. you started to do in your mornings that has, you know, really yes. been a difference that's made the difference? What's one thing that you've added to your morning routine as part of your morning routine that's really put rocket fuel in your rocket? Yeah. Um, I like the... Um, the meditation, the prayer time every morning, mm. um, true believer in that. And then I also started doing just some um, uh, like energy movements, like kind of yoga, things like that, mm. maybe 15 minutes, just kind mm. of to set my day and have that gratitude. Mm. And um, I think gratitude is so important because I love to help people. I'm here to serve. I'm here to help others. That's why I'm in this business. And um, I'm just so grateful that people can find me too, that I can help them. So I find that a full circle. That's your superpower as a mom. That's what I'm sure makes you such a beautiful mom and such a blessing to your kids. You bring your best, your excellence for excellence sake, and you really care. You got a big heart. And you bring that empathy and that caring. You know, I often say you can't be half pregnant. You can't have care. You either care or you don't. And right. you care to your core. And, you know, from the very first uh, time I spoke with you, I knew that to be true. You know, it didn't take long for me to feel that from you. So that's a superpower that certainly serves you well as a mom, but also serves you well as a business leader and as an impact maker and as a mortgage professional, because people can feel that caring we just needed you to embrace the superpower that you already are, which is a huge piece of the mindset work, right? Right. Oh, absolutely. So that mindset was huge. And another thing um, I wanted to add in was maybe a podcast or some industry updates and learn and burn, right? How easy is that? Mm-hmm. So I added that into it. And um, Explain the learn and burn. What, what do you mean by learn and burn? Yeah. So I got my morning routine. So my evening routine, which Coach Pete had suggested, which I loved, was, you know, when the day ends and you're putting out fires because we all get into it, you know, everything's going well and then your deals start falling apart. So I tried to at four o'clock stop stop my days and go to the park and maybe walk one or two miles, like half hour, Mm -hmm. minutes or whatever time. And I listen to podcasts industry updates, um, just to kind of clear my head from my day and take it out and hear positive, right? Motivation yes. from at the end of the day. And then when I come home, I can be in family mode. So it was a nice break, right? To get, cause you know, we could work until 10 o'clock at night, every night or 11. I mean, it's insane. Um, and, people, and buyers will call you if you, if you let them. So you got to have yeah. that structure, right? You got to put your boundaries in, which is another thing I learned, which is great. That's huge. Mm -hmm. And as a mom, that's even more huge because as a mom, we're trained and my wife would attest to this. Moms are trained to give up everything, right? For their, their little beings, they're nurturing. And so moms often lose, lose themselves and they forget that self-care is the most generous thing they can ever do. Because if you're running on fumes, you're not going to have much to give if you don't have it first. So yeah. filling your cup and giving yourself self-care is the most benevolent thing you can do. It's not right. selfish. It's benevolent. But we always, uh, oftentimes get our wires crossed on that. And we're programmed to the contrary of that, much to our detriment. 
certainly a mummy's detriments and when mummy ain't happy, ain't nobody happy, right? <laughs> That's right. I completely agree with that. Yeah. Everyone's happy. like, like, look out, yeah. mean mommy mode. <laughs> Clear the room. <laughs> Absolutely. So I love that you've been rewiring your brain, brain and your uh, your beingness and that new rhythm that fills your cup every day with the learn and burn and with your magic morning routine, winning your morning, winning your day. I love the fact that you're finding creative ways to apply the coaching too, because you know, often we embed the learn and burn as part of the morning routine. But being the coachable agile and malleable soul that you are, you said, wait a second, I'm going to see how can I use this? It doesn't really work for my morning routine. I'm going to use it for my afternoon routine as a way to recharge the battery when my energy is waning at the end of the day. So I love that you're being creative because a lot of people, you know, who don't get as phenomenal results as you do in the program, they're, they have access to the exact same coaching, the exact same tools, the exact same resources, and yet they don't tap into it. And they don't get the results at the same level because they say, well, that won't work for me. That doesn't work in my area, my market. Does, I, I'm a night owl. I can't do morning routine. And so their brain just shuts down because they say, well, that won't work for me versus how can I make that work for me? Right. So I just want to highlight one of the things that has made you successful, Colleen, and perhaps this is just unconscious, but I want to bring it into the light so you're conscious of it and so everyone else is conscious of it is that you're asking better quality questions. How can I apply this? How can I use this? How can I squeeze more juice out of this fruit? And so just huge kudos to you for being that coachable soul who's just ready to receive and apply because it's not in the accumulation of information that we create transformation, but it's in the implementation of that inf information that creates transformation. And you've been a beautiful example of that. So well done. Thank you. Thanks, Doran. Well, and um, like just learned so much from your coaching, right? And I can pass it on to my realtor partners. And it's so simple, right? How you just can um, like flip that conversation and, and, you know, where are the holes in your business and during that discovery and then coming back to the show and tell and say, you know, I can offer you A, B and C. And funny enough, a lot of these realtors are like, oh, yeah, that sounds great. But then they never even tap into it. So I can just appreciate you you're trying, right? Yes. Being creative, being right. innovative. Yes, yeah. which is great. And then, um, you know, and they say, well, you know, maybe I have a buyer who's this. I'm like, yeah, great. We've got a program who can help you out there. We're getting great success with it. And, you know, you just kind of go with whatever their needs are. Yeah. But, um, and once they get a taste of great, they're never going to want to settle for good. And that's the thing, right? That's right? All they all they need is just get a little taste of that greatness. They're never going to settle for good ever again. Right. <laughs> At least not the ones that are right the, the right fit for you. That's for sure. Right. So tell us about the before and after. So you worked through some of the skepticism, the overwhelm. You kept on keeping on, getting comfortable, being uncomfortable, putting in the reps, building the muscle, building the momentum. Mm -hmm. Tell us about how things have changed since January and what has really made the difference. You mentioned some jargon on Planet Prosper. We use jargon like discovery meetings, show and tell. Unpack that a little bit. What's some of the really game-changing shifts in how you're running your business and how you're marketing yourself that's really made a difference and what kind of results has it produced for you? Right. So, you know, the 10, three and one that we talk about, um, reach out to 10, set three coffees, you know, meet with one person because there's so much fallout through that whole thing. And um, when I started meeting with my realtor partners, then I really felt like my value proposition was there. So um, and 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 if it didn't work out, you know, sometimes I meet with people. I'm like, I'm not working with you. You right. know, it's just not a good fit, but we'll have a lot of fun. I guarantee right. I go, leave not, feeling the vibe, not feeling the vibe, but hey, I'm happy right. to connect with a fellow soul and they may not be the right fit for me now. They may never be the right fit, but at least, you know, you're able to make a connection for and maybe sure. they have a referral. Maybe they know someone. Right. Right. And I never went into those meetings like that. Right. So um, it was good for me to kind of separate that out and not take it personally. Like if I didn't, you know, if we just didn't enjoy like that's OK. Like we're not going to, and I actually had to um, 
fire one of my realtors because I was like, this isn't Ooh, working for me. Like the energy. Who fires yeah. a realtor? Who does that? Yeah, it just wasn't a good fit. You know, it wasn't working. And um, and I said, well, you know, I can do, you know, this, you know, the deadly campaign. Um, how about the Google reviews? How about let's get you on a social media platform, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, no, I already have that. I already have that. I already have that. And I already have that. And I said, well, how's that working out for you? Oh, well, it's working out great. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad you're closing zero loans, you know, zero buyers a month or whatever. So anyways, um, but it really helped me put into perspective, you know, what's important to me, how am I going to achieve my goals and get to that end? And how I was able to do that is I'm just putting my authentic, my authentic self out there. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hearing where their holes are in their business and how, how I can help them you know, um, fill those gaps for them. And then, um, yeah, I mean, putting out the gratitude, which, which is huge. And then I just had realtors start calling me like out of the, like people I've talked to in the past and they just started calling me. I'm like, yeah, that's me. And, you know, let's take it from there. So, um, that really helped increase my active agent count with leads, people referring me leads. That's awesome. So I heard three things in there I want to highlight. One is gratitude, cultivating that attitude of gratitude. Obviously, that's part of your magic morning routine now to really cultivate it more intentionally, more purposefully, more consistently. Mm. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Definitely. So it's a muscle, right? And yes. uh, we can either be tuned into Oh Shit FM where we're focusing all, on all the shit in our life and attract more of that, which tends to be pretty stinky and pretty nasty. Or we can focus on all the green and the good and the growing in our life and cultivate gratitude. And guess what? We get to attract more of when we cultivate that energy, right? More Absolutely. of the same. So that's a huge piece that you've highlighted that is worthy of me highlighting your highlight because it's just absolutely huge, as you've said. I also love the fact that you're doing what we call here on Planet Prosper, SWSWSW. Some will, some won't. So what next? Someone's waiting. Right. So instead of trying to sell, which, by the way, when we sell, we tend to repel because the more we sell, the more we tend to tell and the more we repel because we show up and throw up and give a data dump. And it's just all about us instead of focusing on the other person. And when we're trying to convince and persuade, we tend to come from a lack, limitation, scarcity energy. And we're trying to get approval and get a yes. And we're really attached to an outcome. But when we're sifting and sorting, we're kind of indifferent. There's this relaxed confidence like, hey, I've got the Ferrari. The question is not whether or not uh, I qualify for you, but do you qualify for me? I got the Ferrari. I got the cookie. The question right. is, are you ready for my gift? Not the other way around, right? Yeah. So I, I love that you're sh you, you've you taken ownership of that and you ran with it. And uh, all of a sudden, as you said, people are calling you. Yeah. Because you're, and then this the third piece. You're showing up as your authentic self, which is your caring self, your serving self, your excellence for excellence self, your joyful self, your gratitude self. Like all those beautiful attributes have just really come into full bloom. And you're, you've just, I mean, you were beaming before when we first talked because there's just an energy about you that's infectious. But you have amplified and magnified to a whole other level. You were like a, a 85 watt light bulb when you want, and now you're like 500. So <laughs> Good. That's a part of you cultivating that energy in your morning routines and, uh, and doing the simple disciplines. So mm. awesome work. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thanks to you. Well, I mean, we can lead horses to water, but we can't force them to drink. That's why we only work with thirsty horses and you, my dear, mm. are a thirsty horse. Yeah. Yeah. So, so now it's fun. Like I'm having fun, right. Doing yeah. this. So I enjoy that. Um, and it's, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm hoping to take it to the next level. That's my next goal. Um, so I'm excited to even do a deep dive into more of the, you know, items that you offer, your menu of items that I haven't even touched yet. So yeah, um, but keep it up. simple, right? I just pick three things. Keep it simple, superstar. I love, I love it. The KISS <laughs> method of success. Keep it yeah. simple, superstar. That's how we roll. Focus on the vital few, not the trivial many. That's right. Inch by inch, by the yard, it's hard, but inch by inch, everything is a cinch. So we just right. want to stick to right. the basic. Yeah, for sure. And I don't feel like a lone leech now, like meeting with people, right? right? All mortgage officers offer the same thing, 
right? right? We all offer the same programs, same products, some better than others. Like I feel like my products are better. So it does give me a little edge there. But, um, you know, it's just showing up as your authentic self and wanting to show them that you want to help them and offering those extra tidbits that um, we can offer. So Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about your statistics. If you're, are you open to talking a little stats real quick? Yeah, sure. How many uh, realtors did you meet with? How many, what we call VIP partners, did you assign on or attract? And uh, what difference has that made in, ter- in terms of your production? Yeah. So I think um, before I started with you, I think I was like at seven, but like right. two or Most three of them, of them gave me about 80% right? of my business. No, that Most was of them low. Were low producers as well. Correct. I'm sorry. Sorry. What? Most, most of those seven were low producers as well, correct? Yeah, yeah, like low producers. So I was, yeah. I started wanting to go over more of the sharks, right? I wanted to start meeting with them and getting more a piece of their, um, right, their pie. And um, so now I think I'm up to, I was like up to 18. So wow. I almost, you know, I doubled that for sure. And then... Yeah. Um, and, you know, I just met with some new ones this week. So hopefully they'll be sending me some deals and, and some, you know, you just keep dripping on and I'm just starting to get some deals from them back from January, February. So it's just being consistent. It's just that consistency. But so we're like, right now I'm probably up to like 17. I think I was the last time I looked. My goal is to get up to 50, but honestly, Jordan, that's a lot of work and energy. Yeah, you don't want 50, you want like 20 that send you two, three deals a month, right? Now you're okay, making right. now you're making right. seven figures with 15 or 20. Yes, yeah. So um, so I'm excited to see, you know, where the next step is. You got to plant the seed and watch it grow. Absolutely. And tremendous to go from literally spinning your wheels going backwards putting in all that time, energy and effort and going backwards, like your production was half of where it was last year when we talked in January. And since then, literally within two months, you doubled your realtor team and you doubled your production and your commissions. Tell me, what are you, what are you most excited about as you know that you're just scratching the surface of the surface and you're just getting warmed up? What are you most excited about in your life and your business right now? Oh, um, I'm just, yeah, I'm excited to see now that, you know, so in our business, it's like the roller coaster, right? Really good one month down the next. And I'm excited to see it kind of stabilize out now, right? So I'm not so stressed. And once it stabilizes out, then I can put the burners on and look into, um, sorry, my dog. You know, all good. Um, I, I've got four kids and a dog in the background. So okay. welcome to so the kill. Right at the door. <laughs> so um yeah, I'm just excited to see it stabilize and then take it up to the next level. So um that's what I'm really that's what my goal is for the second half of the year. And to um yeah, just utilize all the tools, all the arrows in my quiver. Okay. Yeah. You know, to use that to take it to the next level. And truth be told, you don't even need to use all of them. Just no. get really good at using a handful of them. That's right. It. Just pick right. the three or four things that work for you. Hone into it. And then once that becomes like breathing every day, then if you feel like you want to pick up on some other things, you can do that too. Absolutely. And it's just rinse, wash, repeat. So yeah. what got you to double your business in two months will get you to making seven figures, making liberate your hubby money, freedom money. Right. Right. In yeah. any market, not just a fair weather market. That's right. That's right. Because it's hard right now. Everybody's having a hard time. But um, mm-hmm. you can do it. You know, if you persevere and you find what works for you in the mindset, you got it. I love it. So if you're listening to this, guys, you're watching this, you're like, I'm totally picking up what Colleen's putting down. I can relate to her story. I can relate to her fight and her plight. And her struggle and her frustration and some of her fears. And you've been watching this, listening to this. You're like, I need me some unique selling proposition. I need me some flip in the script. So the realtor needs me more than I need them. I need me some gratitude in my life. I'm 
more into the bickering and complaining because I don't have a solution. And so if that's you and you're in a place where maybe you've hit the point of diminishing returns, like Colleen did, maybe you're at a place where you're seeing the precipice looming closer by the day of having to do something drastic because maybe you're bleeding financially, or maybe there's something at stake where if you keep spinning your wheels on the tarmac, you know, you're going to have to sell some assets or send the spouse back to work or force the spouse to continue working like Colleen's situation. If that's you and you're on a hundred percent commission as a residential mortgage professional, and you want to at least double your income, at least add an extra hundred thousand dollars plus to your income in spite of market conditions, in spite of inflation, in spite of rates going up, in spite of shortage of inventory or all the above. If that's you, and you're sick and tired of being sick and tired of spinning your wheels on the tarmac going backwards or just being in stagnation or just having a really slow grind up the mountain, then I invite you to book a complimentary uh, breakthrough call just like Colleen did back in January. And you'll get on the phone with me or one of my consultants. We're just going to have an honest conversation. We're going to lift up the hood in your business. We'll look at what's working, what's not working, where you're at now in your business, where do you want to take your business? If we can help you take your business to the next level, we'll show you what that looks like inside of our program at mortgagemarketingcoach.com. And if not, frankly, we'll be the first to advise you to pass on our services. But either way, my goal for you and our goal for you is that you leave that call with massive value, massive clarity. Chances are we're going to have some fun. Unless you're really boring, then we won't. Just saying. <laughs> no, I'm just playing with you. So if you'd like to explore your options in that respect, see what we can do to help you like we did for Colleen, book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. So Colleen, thank you so much for your time. Before we sign off today, um, let's just say someone's listening to this and they're like, they're struggling in their business. They've been considering reaching out to coaching, but maybe they're thinking, wow, I'm already spinning my wheels and running on fumes financially. I can't afford to make a bold, intelligent, strategic investment in myself when it comes to coaching. Maybe I need to wait until things warm up a little bit more in the market. Maybe if I hold my breath a little longer, eventually things will turn around. I don't want to put any more strain on the household finances by you know, looking into coaching right now. It sounds like it's expensive. And so maybe someone's holding off because they're just feeling like fear stopping them from taking that first step. What would you say to someone like that? Who's on the edge, who's on the fence and is holding back? Yeah, I'd say take a leap of faith and believe in yourself because you can do it. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it costs some money, but you can make it up in two or three loans. Like it's easy to make up and the uh, return you get will be three times more. So absolutely do it. It's changed my outlook, my mindset, and just my um, attitude towards going, you know, to um, meeting with realtors. Well, Colleen, it's been such a privilege and a pleasure to watch you blossom and bloom. I love seeing you win. You're just getting warmed up. You're just getting started. You haven't even scratched the surface of the surface of the surface yet. So I'm really excited to see you just go stratospheric and whatever level you want to take it, like you said to our audience, I'm saying right back at you, believe it's possible, believe you can do it because you are the dust on top of outstanding and you are truly excellence nice. for excellence sake. So <laughs> you know, you. I, I, don't, I don't say that to butter you up. I say that to be real. Uh, I've been doing this for almost two decades. I know someone who has got the heart, the grit, the hustle, the mindset to win at the highest level. And you, my dear, have all those traits and beyond. So I just uh, invite you to just continue to spread your wings and soar to whatever hearts, uh, wherever, whatever heights your heart uh, calls you to, because uh, I know without a shot of a doubt, you have what it takes. And by God's grace, your hustle and our proven system, any level that you want to achieve is possible. Yeah. Yeah. And Doran, thank you for sharing your proven system. Like that's huge. I love that you're you're open to share it with anybody who wants it. So I appreciate that. And um, your whole team it was great to work with too. It's been a truly a joy and a privilege. So thank you very much for trusting us with your dream. And uh, we know that uh, that's something sacred. We don't take it lightly. So thank you for that. And uh, everyone listening, watching, you've been listening to the one and only Colleen Doyle share her story on how she doubled her income, doubled her closings in just two months without inflicting yourself with the hell of cold calling, begging, bribing, or kissing butts. So if you want some more of what 
she has shared with you has been the transformation story and the impact maker in her life, her business, which is our proven system. Go ahead and book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. And let's see if we can align the synergy we need to help you create your breakthrough as well. So again, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Thanks for hanging with us, guys. This is Dorn Aldana coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast with the one and only Colleen Doyle. And if you dig it, go ahead and give us a five-star review on iTunes or wherever you find our podcast. Be blessed. We'll see you on the next episode. Peace, y'all. Thanks for being with us.